Hello, glad you can join us. To celebrate Internal Audit Awareness Month, we are highlighting the leaders who are forging the future of the profession. Plus, we'll learn how small audit teams are bringing big value to their organizations. Stay tuned. The Institute of Internal Auditors presents All Things Internal Audit. We'll kick things off with a look into the future of internal audit at the IIA's Leadership Academy and Global Student Conference held last month in Orlando, Florida. This first-of-its-kind event welcomed students and chapter leaders from all over the world to connect and explore strategies to advance the profession. Some presentations at the event were designed to help prepare students for networking opportunities in the future. Here's IIA District Representative Jamie Shine speaking with Yvette Adams, Senior Audit Manager at Zion's Bank Corporation, and Jude Viator, Consulting Associate Director at Postlethwaite and Netterville, about developing your personal brand. Hi, Yvette and Jude. In your presentation on Networking 101, you share an acronym with the group, and that's PI, or P-I-E. What does that stand for? That's a great question, Jamie. The P is for performance. The I is for image, and the E is for exposure. And all three elements are key to getting a successful career. I love that. Now, you just presented to a group of amazing students at the Global Students Exchange, students from all over the world. How did that go, and how did they receive your message? We, we think it went really well, but what we can tell you with certainty is they were locked in to the conversation. Yeah. They were locked into the messaging we didn't get a lot of questions, but we saw interaction. We asked them to get up and practice. And as we surveyed the room, we saw them already utilizing the things we had given them, applying it to the conversations with each other. And so we applaud the students. We knew it would be the best and brightest that there is out there. And that came to fruition in our room. That's amazing. Now, why do the ratios of performance, image, and exposure matter? Well, I think first we probably need to communicate what we mean by ratios. And so as she says, PIE are all critical to your success. Mm -hmm. They're different components of your overall well-being as a, a trusted employee. So your performance when you start, that's 50% of what you're looking to be. Your image and your exposure is about 25%. But as you progress through your career, those percentages change. And it's based on the value you are bringing to the table, your role within your organization and on your team. You go from doing the audit and documenting it to delivering those results, meeting with stakeholders. So you think you can understand how you're seen and the exposure you have changes with that. That's really interesting, Jude. I like that. What are some points of focus that you would consider when you're refining and continuing to develop your brand? So similar to your progression through your career, that's going to change as you go. Mm -hmm. But the things that stay constant is you need to understand your audience. Yeah. Who are you trying to talk to? Who are you talking to? What message are you trying to get across? Also your perception. Mm -hmm. How do you see yourself? How do they see you? You know, an example we shared during our presentation was verbal and nonverbal communication is very mm -hmm. similar to how your perception is. You know how you see you if you choose to look at a mirror, mm -hmm. but then consider how other people see you. And that's that verbal side where have those colleagues, friends, professionals that give you feedback on how mm -hmm. they see you to make sure there's consistency. That's a great tip. I've never thought of that before. Not just taking that internal feedback, but getting that external feedback from other people who may perceive you differently. Well, thank you guys so much for your time today and for sharing all these great tips with us about developing our personal brands. Thank you. Thank you. The IIA International Conference in Amsterdam, July 10th through the 12th. Register by the 31st of May and save $200. To do so, visit the IIA.org forward slash IC. Is small the new big? The 2023 North American Pulse of Internal Audit Report shares that 53% of those who responded reported that their audit team consisted of nine persons or fewer. So how are they delivering results? Greg Van Schoik of the IIA chats with Sarah Duckwitz, Director Internal Audit at Cross First Bank, on adding big value with small audit teams. Hi, Sarah. In your presentation, you share strategies for empowering small audit teams to deliver increased results. One recommendation you give is to track and select projects based on value and coverage. Tell us more about that. Sure. Um, in internal audit, we get ideas for special projects in a lot of different ways. So you may get phone calls from business unit leaders saying, I need audits help. You may see something in an internal audit where you think, oh, 
I could really help you in there and offer a suggestion, but there are a lot of different special projects that come into audit. So what I do is I log them in a simple Excel spreadsheet where I track the department that requested it, the complexity of the project, um, about how much time I think it will take my audit team to do that, any special resources I might need to get it done, but then the impact to the organization. So if we do that project, um, what's the financial impact or the customer service impact? Basically, what is the impact to the organization? And instead of taking projects on a first in, first out basis, uh, my team looks at what are the projects that we've received and what makes the most sense to do. And then I use that tracker at year end to share it with the audit committee of what we've done, what we've got in and what we've done. That's great. Yeah. And you give strategies for delivering more coverage with minimal hours. Can you give us a high level look at that? Sure. And we'll talk more about this in my session, but, um, I talk about leveraging coverage from other groups. So there are risk activities that help in throughout the organization. So um, there may be departments that do their own risk assessment. There may be third party validations or reviews that other departments engage. And so the first thing I do is try to capture all of that information and just really understand where are all the risk activities in our organizations. And some of those um, departments may report those risk activities to the board separately, but internal audit can bring it all together and share those risk activities with the audit committee. And then I also use that to uh, assess risk annually when I'm working on an audit plan. If I have an area where there might be outside coverage, even if it's engaged by another department, if I'm comfortable with the scope, I may choose to audit a different area instead of auditing the area that had some coverage, especially with an audit team, a small audit team, I have to be scrappy about where I get my coverage. The other thing that I do to get additional coverage without a lot of extra hours is to audit the second line of defense. So if I'm doing an internal audit that's doing first line of defense activities, but there's a second line of defense that's a monitoring function or a testing function at a different level, I may test that second line instead of doing a more robust sample on the first line. So still getting coverage and risk coverage, but generally for less hours if I can get comfortable at that second line of defense level. That's really great insight. And we have one last question. You recommend sharing success stories with your audit committee and executive leadership team to help them understand your value. What are some of those examples? Sure. Um, it's mainly through reporting. So quarterly, I like to share various dashboards and metrics with the audit committee of the risk coverage that we're getting. So I generally share a percentage of um, moderate and high risks that we're covering. I generally share the number of consulting projects that we've done and the impact to date from on a quarterly basis. If we've offered efficiency enhancements or that uh, value enhancement to a process, I share all of that with the audit committee. But I have dashboards, again, audit committees tend to be very visual, so they're visual metrics and dashboards. And then annually, I put together an annual report for the audit committee that pulls more detail in so they can see the great things that internal audit is doing. But I think it's sharing the story. I mean, the business unit leaders that I work with know that we're doing things to protect and enhance the value of internal audit. And the executives that I work closely with know that. But until you put that story together cohesively for the bigger group, um, the bigger group may not have that message. And I think it's really cool when you put that story together and they start sharing the same story that you've shared with other leaders in the organization. That's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing your time and knowledge with us today. We look forward to your session, Sarah. Thank you. And now for a bit of challenging fun we call In Focus. The Internal Auditing Education Partnership, IAEP program, was developed to respond to the growing interest in internal audit education at institutions of higher learning. IAEP program schools are colleges and universities teaching an internal auditing curriculum within a degree program endorsed by the IIA. There are 56 schools globally with 17 schools in countries outside of North America. The question, which of these countries listed on the screen is the home to the largest number of IAEP schools outside of North America? We'll be back with the answer in just a bit. Hi, I'm Rosalie Ennis, CEO and founder of Port Equa Consulting. I started on the path to internal audit when I was exploring career options after spending a few years in external audit at KPMG. I started talking to colleagues, uh, mentors about different options that I could do. So whether that was accounting or finance or external audit at a smaller firm. However, internal audit 
definitely captured my attention for two reasons. So one was I was going to have the opportunity to travel if I did internal audit at a larger company. And so I knew I could travel to different countries, which I always wanted to do something in international business to use my languages um, to as a strength. Um, to travel, to see cultures, different perspectives. Um, and I'd be able to travel for two or three weeks at a time, which I feel like helps you get in depth into different countries and how different countries do business. So that was number one, love to travel, and this would give me the opportunity. And then number two was being an internal audit would give me a broad view of company operations. So I'd be able to see how companies operate, their processes, how they manage their vendors, their customers, how they make marketing decisions. And within that, I'd be able to meet a ton of people. So a ton of stakeholders amongst different groups and at different parts of the company, whether that's at the leadership level, at the manufacturing level, at the retail store level. Uh, so that was an, definitely the kind of the top two reasons. So ability to travel and a broad view of the company is why I started down the path to internal audit and why I'm still here definitely many years later. Now here's the answer to our In Focus challenge. The question was, which of these countries listed on the screen is home to the largest number of IAEP schools outside of North America? The answer is... South Africa, which has four schools. For more information on the IAEP, visit www.theiaa.org Internal Audit Foundation. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave comments, or a rating. If you'd like to enjoy an extended version of the discussions featured today, visit theiia.org, where IIA members get access to a longer version of this episode with bonus information and insights on networking and adding big value with small audit teams. The 2023 Public Sector Virtual Conference, Thursday, June 29th. Join us to learn more about navigating today's risks and opportunities. For more info, visit the IIA.org forward slash PSVC. The CIA Challenge Exam, available April 1st through May 30th. Qualified Information Systems Auditors can earn the CIA with one exam. Apply today. Visit the IIA.org forward slash QISA Challenge. Thanks for joining us for all things internal audit from the IIA. We'll connect again soon.